Now, with that in mind, let's look at it as a television program. Camera on Earth comes on, and mankind is on stage now, and it's time for him to play his part. Now, is he going to be a noble individual in a wonderful relationship with God? Well, let's look at him. Why do the nations rage, we're told, and the peoples imagine a vain thing? Now, here we see the coming together of the nations of the world and the peoples, the masses, and they're coming together and they imagine a vain thing. Actually, the word means empty. Whatever's brought them together in this great protest movement will never be fulfilled. It's an empty thing. It's all dream stuff. It can never come to pass. Well, let's see what it is. Verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Now, here is an unusual protest movement. It doesn't come from the hoi polloi out there or some minority group, but it comes from the establishment. That is, here are the kings, the political rulers, and then the rulers that are mentioned here, they are the religious rulers, and they come together. Here is politics and church and religion joining together. And what's brought them together in this tremendous rage and this empty thing? Well, here's the alarming thing. They are coming together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying. Now, they're coming together against Jehovah and against his Messiah, for that is the word here. And that word Messiah brought into the New Testament in the Greek is Christos, and it comes to us in our language as Christ. Here is a great movement, a worldwide movement against God and against Christ. The question has always been, when did this movement begin? Well, it began 1,900 years ago, we're told, over in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. We're told that at the first persecution of the church, the apostles, when they were let go, they came back to the church, and the church lifted up their voice and thanked God. And then they quoted this psalm, "...who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the nations rage? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together." against the Lord and against his Christ. Now, when did this begin? We are not left to our imagination here or our own devices. The Spirit of God gives us the interpretation, and here it is. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the nations and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Here you find the Gentiles with their leaders and religion with its leaders, the political leaders and the religious leaders coming together against God and against Christ. Now, this is something that seems unbelievable. And somebody says, well, it's hard for me to believe that today. I don't think the world is against Christ. Well, let's look at this a moment. This movement began way back when Herod and Pontius Pilate were made friends, and for the first time the religious rulers and Pilate, they agreed, and Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. That began a movement that has begun to snowball, and it's come down through the centuries, and it will finally break like a mighty crescendo upon this earth, a great worldwide rebellion against God and against Christ. Now, many of us believe that will find its final fruition during the time of the Great Tribulation after the church is removed from the earth. But it's hard for people to believe that today. Now, I personally, and in the book that we have, What Is This World Coming To?, I go into a great deal of detail here. But let me just say this, that the world today is not opposed to the liberal Jesus. 
the Jesus of liberalism never lived. And I think I can prove that because there's no record of him. The Jesus of liberalism, he was not virgin born. He did not perform miracles. He did not die for the sins of the world. He did not rise bodily from the grave. Now, the only Jesus that ever lived is recorded in the Word of God. And he was virgin born. He performed miracles. He died for the sins of the world. And he rose again for our justification. Now, that's the only Jesus that we have any historical documents of. But the Jesus of liberalism, of course, is a figment of the imagination. He's the Jesus of superstar. And all of this type of thing appeals to the man of the world. But the Jesus of the Bible, they're not prepared to accept him yet. And we find today a great nation, and it is a great nation, Russia, built on the political philosophy of atheism. Not just neutral, but active atheism, opposition against God. And that's unusual. That's just happened in our day. That is the day of many of us. I can remember when Russia was considered a third-rate nation. And actually, we pulled them through World War I and World War II. And now they probably are the best-prepared nation for war of any nation in the world today. And that's atheistic. The great nations of the past were never atheistic. They were polytheistic. That is, they worshiped many gods. Now there's active opposition against God in this country and against Christ. You say, how do you know that? How can you demonstrate it? 